I guess it makes sense ultimately for people that are not familiar with you, sort of who you are and your name. And I think it really makes sense. Sort of, if you can, just go from the beginning. I'm, I'm, I'm personally, because I don't know this, I'm really interested, like the percussion side of things and drums and how you got into it and any kind of early memories of uh, listening to music, mate. Sure. Well, well, I started off as a drummer and obviously I grew up in Yorkshire in the 70s when pretty much, I lit literally my biggest influence when I was first started playing, when I was like nine or whatever, were the Wombles. And it kind of progressed from there. And I just used to, then punk came along, I really got into that. And, you know, I knew that I wanted to play in a band and I was in a couple of really good bands in, in Bradford, which is where I'm from in Yorkshire, the great music scene. All my friends, we, were, we just used to go see bands, camp out all night to get tickets, to see Thin Lizzy and stuff. I mean, it was an amazing time. Um, and then I moved to London, um, I started, just gigging with a, a, a friend. Um, and then I was, I used to go to auditions and um, I went for an audition um, for uh, an act that was on Paul Weller from the, the jam then. Um, and uh, he was uh, looking for some musicians to play with some of his acts. And I failed the first audition and then somebody called me back two weeks later and I went along for the audition and um, I got the job. And then uh, and it was for this girl called Tracy Young and she sang on Beat Surrender and yeah. she, did the, she had a hit called The House at Jackville. And yeah. um, I, I started playing with her and we did the album and this all leads me to percussion and Natal. And um, when we were in the studio, which was Solid Bond Studios, which was Paul Weller's studio. I just did percussion on the album. There happened to be those famed yellow and black Natal congas and bongos in the studio that Paul owned. And um, and we used them. They played on every single record that every, anybody made in that studio for like, wow, six, seven years or whatever. I took them on tour. And basically that's how I, how I fell into it. So when yeah. Style Council were playing live, Tracy would support the Style Council. And I'd play drums with Tracy and then I'd swap and then the Style Council would come and Steve White was the drummer and I'd play percussion with the Style Council. And I was doing two gigs a night. <laughs> <laughs> can, I just, uh, yeah. can I just pause, mate? Because I, um, I don't want to kind of stop your flow, but... The fact that you started on kit and, I mean, me as a drummer, mate, I can, I, you know, I can play a bit of tambourine, but percussion is a whole different language. Ironically, being from Bradford, which was a very, like, or it's a very, I'm Ukrainian anyway, okay. and, yeah. and it's a very multi, multicultural place. Yeah. And um, some of the first gigs I ever saw when I was a kid were, like, when I was about 10 or 11, were like... Um, Santana I saw and that's kind of what got me into it even like the Mahi Vishnu Orchestra and, yeah. and obviously there was a lot of tabla players that that were coming through Bradford that would be cater specifically to that community but like Zaki Hussain and people like that so it was always like a big part of uh, a, like music really it was like there was always that influence um, but again it wasn't until like I sat down probably in 1983 with a pair of congas and I was kind of like oh I think I can do this yeah yeah so um yeah it's a it different was... language isn't it I mean yeah. I've got to I've got to share with you and with with the viewers who are watching this that basically I was sat at home on the Saturday the 13th of July in uh, 1985 I believe right and, uh, yeah 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 <laughs> It was, a big day. it was a big day for me because as a music yeah. fan to switch on my TV to this incredible event, this yeah. became a historical called Live Aid. And yeah. I remember watching that show and watching every act on it. I videoed it and I watched everyone. And, it, and many, many acts sort of stood out to me. But one thing that really stood out to me was you and Steve White playing with the Style Council. I've got to ask you, and I've got to bring that to the <laughs> forefront. That how was that day for you? Well, well, I think it was it was quite amazing because I was twenty one, so Steve was nineteen. But okay. it, it, it we knew it was going to be obviously band the Band Aid single had been out and it'd been really successful, and Paul was you know in it yeah. in the video and stuff like that. Um, but I think on the day, like the you know it. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was the most beautiful day. We all went up there on um, on a coach, 
and it was just I mean like the greatest day in music in a lot of ways I mean it, it, it was it, yeah um, I just I mean mate there's so much that we can celebrate with uh, your fantastic well, life and career <laughs> that I really I do want to just point out a few things that would be really nice for you to share and I remember either you telling me this once or this was something I read but I remember Martin Ditcham from Sade was someone that was quite yeah. important well, to your career. Yeah, he was he was massive because Martin obviously like when I was with the Star Council like for a couple of years and then after Live Aid and I think Paul had a bit of a break until like eighty seven or whatever. And then I we did a red this thing called Red Wedge, which is like a very political like uh, thing in 85, 86. And there was a band called the Blow Monkeys on that that particular bill. And Steve just said, oh, you should ask them if they want a percussionist because they're going on tour really soon. They were just having a big hit. And um, I did, and I went on tour with them. And it, in the interim, I somehow I, I met Martin Ditcham in a rehearsal room, I think it was. And Martin was just, he's just the loveliest guy, great percussionist, great drummer. And um, he, went, he went away with Sade for like a year and a half on tour. And basically, he left my phone number on his answer machine. Going, wow. if you need anybody to play percussion on your records, just call Steve Delnick. <laughs> and, and it was like, it was like, you couldn't have written like it was I was getting caught I mean I shouldn't have really been doing it because I wasn't like he was a great player and I was kind of just learning and, um, and kind of learning in the spotlight I suppose but what what was amazing was that he, he 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 when you get an affinity with somebody it's like you recommend somebody you know is going to do the job you know are going to be on time and blah 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 and, and I kind of even though probably it wasn't the greatest, I was always on time. And um, I, I always, I, and I kept on getting called back. And it wasn't really like there was um, a, a, a rivalry. It was just like, just work, people right, got, yeah, 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 people got, there was enough work to go around. People got together. So. As we're talking around this time, I know that one of the tours, or maybe you did more than one with them, but the uh, the massively massive boy band Bros. <laughs> yeah, at that point, I was I was really I just on the Blow Monkeys. It was um, eight seven. I was doing a uh, Aztec Camera. I was getting a lot of other stuff. I was working with Robert Fripp and Toya. But it, 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 I I'd never done a big like like something that was current or whatever. Yes. And 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 I at that point as well as playing a lot of percussion. Um, and touring, I, I'd also bought. Like, I'd got into playing a lot of electronic percussion as well. So, yeah. and 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 that's kind of why I got involved with Bros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which must have been a highly emotionally kind of uh, sort of lively audience. Obviously, they were yeah. such a big kind of team thing at the time. Weren't they? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was. I think probably the biggest. I've, I've never experienced anything like it. And, no, I'm uh, sure not. It was like one of those years that I'm, I did, and I really enjoyed it. I made a load of great friends, and yeah, it was it was awesome. But like pop, that kind of pop music was not really kind of my cup of tea. No, but you did it, so. and it was a tick. But it was an enjoyable it, it, thing. It, yeah. And it was, yeah. and, and like literally everything you do, you learn from. Mate, so we should we should embrace like like you have done already, but we should embrace your kind of relationship playing the tile percussion, and and it'd be great yeah. for you to share. With the viewers, what kind of the tile gear that you've used or you use or you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got, like. I've got some. I've got, I've got a couple of things there. I've got, I've got. Yeah. I use really small timbal. Is the ten and twelve? that are hand hammered, amazing. Nice. Um, I, I use. I'm really into the classic congas, like the the the, the original uh, fiberglass molds. Yeah. Um, the kinto is is perfect for me. And I think normal Kinto, like, well, not normal, but when you go for, like, a different make, some of the Kintos are a lot bigger. So for me, like, they've always worked. And and even after after all these years, they're still, like, my it's my favourite kind of drum. They're my favourite particular style that I, I prefer to play. The one thing that I've always admired about you, you've always evolved and you've kind of diversified and done different things. Yeah. Is that because you, you wanted to keep working or a bit of... Yeah, I, I think, I think it, yeah, I think it was like uh, in 86 when, when I went, we went on tour with the Blow Monkeys and they had a big hit, Digging Your Scene. And we, supported, we supported Robert Palmer on the Addicted to Love tour. 
and he had a cup he had a great band and there was a girl who was playing keyboards and percussion and she would she was using some samples um, and that was the first time I'd ever see I think it wasn't really affordable before then and I, directly when I got back I, I saved all my money and I bought a sampler when I got back in like, and that was 1986 and I knew that it, it was like for me like all kinds of percussion it's um it's just that you, you're using a different brush with a different, different palette. palette. Yes. That's it for me. Ultimately, for me, it's all about the voice and what's going on around it. And that's kind of why I got into, like, diversifying and, and trying to do different things. I knew that I could, I brought quite I brought quite a lot to the table. And as music changed, I kind of tried to change with it. It's so clear to me and anyone watching this, there's just that, to me, yeah. apart from being a phenomenal percussionist and drummer, you you're a fan of music. You love music. I love music. You love I life. Love you know, obviously, playing ability and you know being being on time is dead important. But I'd like to think that it's also being a damn good person is really important. And you're a good guy, man. No, thank when your you. name comes you? up, it's always it's always well, associated with a positive <laughs> vibe. Well, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that and everything. And I think like this, well, that's you what know, it says here, man. I'm just reading what. It, <laughs> Uh, I'm no, joking, no, I'm joking. No, 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 I think, I think you're right. I, I, I'll be the first one to admit. I mean, it's like probably because of my inability to solo and do things like that. I, I make Same up for it in other ways. Yeah, it's which is what playing music. And I, I, I've, I've been lucky because I've worked with a lot of amazing singer-songwriters. I guess it's amazing to the non-percussionist that might think it's just this small amount of stuff that kind of um, adds to songs and groups. Yeah. But you take it away on some classic songs and you really love it. So it might not seem like that much stuff is going on in the percussion department, yeah. but you remove it and you're like, hang on, what's that space going on? So yeah. it's really I mean, important, I, isn't it, man? It, it, yeah, I think, I think for me, the two there's like three things that I love playing percussion. Um, triangle. Yeah. Look, Amazing shaker, obviously, and, and mark trees. And I've okay. got that little, the little Natal mark tree yeah. that is just doesn't over. It's not overbearing, and I use that on everything. Really, it's <laughs> it, yeah, and it's awesome. And um, yeah, you're filling in the bits of color. You've got kind of going with the approach. You just got to do whatever you whatever you feel. Um, you can add to a record. You should do it, and that, that's where being a percussionist and. Um, even when you, even if you approach up to playing kit or playing bass or whatever, you, yeah, you yeah. kind of you you look at it from a different angle as opposed to like, right, I'm going to go in, I'm going to like, right, here we go. You know, it's like with maturity and with experience, yeah. Long long gone are the is that yeah. thing of like I've got, I've got to get that clever little thing I've been working out in my wow. room in. It's not about that. It's about listening and absorbing to what's going on around you and basically responding accordingly with what you know and feels right. And obviously, like you've said, being a team player and doing that. Um, I think it's been a great conversation. Personally, I'm so I'm so um, honoured to have an opportunity to, to catch up and really hear some of the great stuff you've done. And, and I'm sure there's a zillion artists we haven't touched upon. But, mate, listen, look after yeah. yourself. And it's yeah, really, you, really yeah. kind of you to... Um, find the time to talk to us. And again, I just want to say thanks to Natal for supporting me and supporting for you. Sure. With your for sure, for sure.